Well, shared experience with all of us. And let's get right to it. Um, obviously, you're all big movies, and obviously, these two actors that we're going to bring out have a ton of amazing roles between them. But of course, is your mic cutting out constantly? Is it a little bit? Yeah. Maybe. Well, why don't we just bring out the 11th Doctor and Rory Williams? Please. watching the news, as you are, uh, and then saw your little face pop up on television. Because then that's on the news, and then you don't know to. And I text you saying, I want a pencil case with your face on, which I still don't have. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And then, so then they were talking about Rory Paul, and they were like, oh, Arthur Doyle was kind of like, yeah, you that guy. And we did an audition together, didn't we? Yeah, and that audition with Mother Ben. And then we got a car back together where you were like, you've got it, you've got it, you've got a job. And we got drunk in the car, drunk in the car. Apparently all we do is drink. This is pure gin. Yeah. And then I didn't hear for about six weeks. Was it between four and six weeks? I was broke. And I was doing my tax at my parents' house. Like, surrounded by receipts on the floor, kind of being quite depressed. And then, it was the only time I got a job and I, and I like, screamed the house down. Mm. It's one of those jobs that you get and you don't quite know how to compute. Um, and then me, Karen, and Arthur, it, it, you know, we just sort of had to stick together, really, because it was such a strange moment. And David and Julie and Russell were so popular. And, and, and so, you know, me, Steve, and Karen, and Arthur were like a new... And you breathe. I think the pressure on you was, was a lot more than on, on deep, us. Deep, 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 deep panic. Deep. <laughs> deep panic. And also, everyone hated me before I knew you. I don't know. They were like, he's 26. Who's this guy? And then, um, so that was more deep and private panic. Do you remember that? Point? Remember when we watched the rough cut? I do. So what? Horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> we watched it in the producer's house there. And, um, well, it wasn't horrendous. It was. Well, what? It was just like we watched like this. Yeah, we didn't really know what to do. But I think you film it and you don't, you don't think that people are going to watch it. You just, yeah. You just do it and try and make it truthful or funny or both, hopefully. Yeah. Um, which you do every day. Thanks. Um, and um, yeah, so that was it. That was a long answer, wasn't it? But. When you took this job, I mean, you had to expect that this was the kind of reception that you would get going forward with it being such an... You know what this reception? No. 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 No.
first season of, which was season five, um, they didn't even know if they were going to continue to make Doctor Who. So we made the season, the episode went out, the ratings did well, then they said, then they recommissioned it. But, you know, at that time it wasn't like a, you know, and it's unthinkable really that they wouldn't make Doctor Who now. Idiots. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, it was, it was bizarre. It was wonderful, though. It was, uh, I look back on those times with yeah. great fondness. It's nice to be able to reminisce as well. Like most jobs you do, and then you go, oh, God, we're going to stay in touch forever. We're best friends. And then you never see anyone ever again. And you forget about it. You don't really think about yeah. it until it kind of pops up on, you know, a repeat from BBC Two. Yeah. Or you, yeah. Get, you know, we get to come and talk about it uh, with yeah. you guys. It's just bizarre. It's like the part. It's, it's the most humble. Like this, I find it is. is really humble. It's like massively weird group therapy. <laughs> <laughs> we should have a character here. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna go into the audience and get some questions. But uh, while we do that, I was wondering if you could tell us what you got up to last night because you were in front of a different big uh, crowd last night, right? Yeah. Look how it went down last night. Last night was. Tell it, Arthur. It was great. What are you tell? Because you, you met... Well... <sighs> we met... Well, anyway, I'll cut a long story short. Cut a long story short. But to cut a long story short, we danced on stage with Arcade Fire. <laughs> we turned into you guys, and then we met them afterwards and tried not to be embarrassing. Yeah. Which we're not quite sure how successful we were. Yeah. Because we love Arcade Fire, like, we love Arcade Fire. And, um, and they're Canadian, so... Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I feel like I've got to sit back so we don't not include this lovely girl. Yeah. 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 Can you? Oh, you got a screen. Hey! Yeah. Wow! The table! Bloody tables! <laughs> but then what do we do with the water? It's good. It looks like. Oh, feng shui! It's all wrong, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah. 
really look at me like that. Yes, yes, I can. Time is an imposition on one's dignity. Oh. I added a bit about never let it be your ruler, but I thought it needed a punchline. So. There's no My way I can top that. Some like life advice about a stuffed owl or something. <laughs> Arthur loves taxidermy. <laughs> it's it's a weird thing to like. It's a weird thing to like. Yeah, it is. What? <laughs> 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 you want to go on a date with Arthur? Uh, Tom Courtney, <coughs> who is a hero of mine, an actor, uh, and he said, took me, I was doing a job with him. This is just the only piece of advice I, that I can remember ever being given. <laughs> it's not necessarily good. Uh, and I was doing a job with him, and he, he invited me into his trailer. And he said, uh, <coughs> Speak louder. <laughs> I listen to all the young actors mumbling all their lives. Speak up! <laughs> Ever since then, I've shouted all my eyes. <laughs> the song is to work. Sorry, call me advice. Yeah. Alright, we got Brendan over here to stage. Well, over here. There Brendan, my man! Cool hair! Oh, thanks, man. That actually means a lot coming from you. I used to have cool hair. Oh, you still do. Oh, hi, very much. Um, anyway, though, um, Peter Capaldi was obviously on Doctor Who before, but never quite in the role as um, the role that he that he passed on to him. And I was wondering, uh, what advice did you give him in terms of what to expect? Uh, I gave him one piece of advice, and it was one line, and I said, "Listen to no one." <laughs> Honestly, be your own invention and, and there are so many stages, the costume, the TARDIS, the, the how you're going to play it and what you're going to do and everyone has an opinion and there's such a, there's such a machine behind it as well so yeah, that was my one piece of advice to the Capaldi, who I love. He's a cool, he's a cool man. Oh, I don't love him too much, I'm right here. I'm mean, I'm not even dead yet, I was in the last episode. Here. Yeah, next one, next one. I'm almost right in the middle here with Sophia. Almost Hi. right in the middle. Hello. Hey. Yes. Hi. Sophia. Um, so which was the most fun episode to film and why? Ah, uh, Doctor. It's hard to put it into any kind of order. Because they were all so much fun. Uh, apart from... <laughs> <laughs> the Pandora Ropers went by so cold. I didn't mind that because it was good. Yeah, it was a crap. Hey, come on. I, I think Croatia was hard to Croatia call. was amazing. When we made a Vincent and the Doctor and Vampires and Venice, they were pretty fun. That was really, really fun. That was the first time we all been... It was like something just happened down there. No one else. But, um, it was the first time we all been... It was like being on holiday together. It was. It was. I mean, there was, we took over this little town. In, uh, in Croatia, which was a beautiful town, but it was yeah. off-season, so nothing was open apart from this pizza place called Merkek Pizza, which he ate in every night. Yeah. Um, and just had a bit of a jolly. Yeah, we did. And there were great people in that. Yeah. The guy that played Vincent was an absolute hero. He's a cool dude. Tony Blair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Helen yeah. McCoy yeah. was divine and, you know, Hello, Mr. Vi. Hello, Andrew. Good morning, Mr. Vi. There were just good people in that. Yeah, so that was fun. Yeah. But they were all so much fun. And we had two confidential back then, which was good fun. Yeah. I mean, yeah. With Barrett. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> so Barrett was like a lot to watch him. Yeah, yeah. to make him that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm over here on the right between Jamie and Ryan. Hi, I guys. thought the costumes were great. So, Ryan, what's your first question? Do you think bow ties are actually cool? Uh, <laughs> let me ask you a real 
question, do you think bow ties are actually cool? Yes. Yeah. What's your favorite companion besides Amy? life and life informs art and it's a very, you become very close. Um, but me, me carrying off, I had a very special journey together. Um, but I love Jenna too. Don't ask me that question. <laughs> you cool five year old. <laughs> no, that was a good question. Put people on the spot in life. It's a good quality to have. <laughs> Right in the middle here, gentlemen, this is Calvin. Hi, guys. Um, Hello. Doctor Who is so rich in sci-fi history. My question to the two of you is, if you had to pick one iconic role in sci-fi outside of the BBC, what would you pick and why? Blimey. What to play or to... that we like? To play. Oh, science fiction. Wow, that's a good question. Ooh. <clears throat> I... You're going to come up with something good, I know you are. <laughs> um, what was that? Terminator! Terminator? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never know. <laughs> uh, they're going to shoot me. Yeah. Um, I'd like to play Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> You'd have to put on a bit of weight. You'd be a good job of that. I would absolutely love it. I went to Star. I'm quite a big Star Wars fan, and I just relate and yeah, crowd. And I went to Paris the other week uh, for a week, and uh, it was a Star Wars. It's a really boring story. It was a Star Wars exhibition, and I walked. I thought it was like in the middle of Paris, but I had a very bad sense of direction. I walked for three hours in the blazing heat and got to this like car park. Oh, it's horrible. But then got to see Jabba the Hutt's eyes. They just had us all they have left of him, it's just his eyes. Why are they in Paris? Also, why is there no context to Jabba the Hutt being in Paris? I don't know. That's just the story. Yeah, I know. I mean, cool. Uh, who would I pay? I don't know. Can I come back to you and think about that one? Because I don't want to get it wrong. And I, and I need to think about good science fiction characters. I've got to go back. I want to go back, back in the day. Like someone old, someone weird, someone cool. Cool chat. Sounds like a doctor, but you know. <laughs> You've already played the best one. Yeah. And on the floor, we're here. Yes, the left side's finally getting some time. Uh, no time on Now this question is to both of you. What was your favorite line to say on Dr. Who? Oh. Rory! <laughs> Rory! The number of times I have to say doctor is just <laughs> Me and me and Kaz do okay, doctor. Yeah. Let's, let's do the whole prefer. You do one and I'll do one. Me and Kaz did this the other day. Go. Doctor. Doctor? Doctor? <laughs> doctor! Doctor! Doctor. <laughs> doctor. <laughs> doctor. We said that we could record yeah. these, you just, we wouldn't have to turn up to work. Just say, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but in some episodes, you have like 20. Yeah. Arthur always used to like doing this, he'd go, that's the doctor. <laughs> well, then we used it. I think, yeah, I'm trying to make it my catchphrase. 
happen. Oh, the doctor. Yeah. I, I, I like to say the wrong name, which was. And I was never meant to say it more than once. I just started adding it in, and then it stuck. Yeah. I only said it in that uh, regeneration episode, and then and then I stuck it in, in the beast below, and from then on we just were like, yeah, it's pretty weird. I thought I said shut up here, bro. Good. That was good. That's what the, you opened good. the script to go. Thanks. <laughs> well, then, someone, someone, um, someone showed me a line today that I had to write on a on a on a, on a poster saying, "If you, oh no, what was it? Christ, I forgot." Um, Chop for breakfast. If you don't feel sick by mid morning, then something's wrong. Something like that. It was funny in my head. <laughs> Right in the middle here, fellas, at the back. Right down the middle at the back. Hey, Hello. I've got Isabel and Rihanna that just met today. They're already best friends. They have one question, but they both want to ask it together. Go. Um, we're huge fans of Karen and Babes. I know Karen's not here, but can we get a song? Yeah. Yes! <laughs> That's what I was going to ask. I see a little silhouette to the Scalabouche, Scalabouche, can we do the Vandango? Thunderbolts and lightning, very, very exciting. When I thought, when, when I heard I was going to get the role, 
When did David Letterman become six? <laughs> Precocious young soul. <laughs> Fabulous. What, uh, my first thought was, oh God, don't hate me world. <laughs> and then I sort of panicked inwardly. I mean, well, that's uh, turn. No, I knew for like three months. And I couldn't say a word, so I told my parents, and then I told my sister, and I told my best friend, because we were watching Doctor Who one day on the telly, or it was on, and I sort of, he knew I'd been for the audition, he said, Bondi, we were in my flat, and I just sort of smiled, and like that. And he looked at me, he just kept looking at me, he was like... Oh, I was like... No. He was like, yeah, you have, I was like, no, I haven't, and then that was quite nice for Oh no, you just sort of, um, oh gosh, I don't know, you think, you sort of panic a bit. I think when, I, when any actor gets a job, they go, oh my god, I've got a job, what am I going to do? I've got a job, I've got to work, I've got so to much, it. So much of it is, is getting to that moment where they go, hey, here's the job. And then it's that moment afterwards, which is kind of, it's a killer, actually, at times, because you go, oh god, I've actually got to do this now. <laughs> It's quite a lot of work. And then, the wife ran off. Yeah. And David was on the telly still, so I'd meet people in the pub and stuff, and they'd be like, don't ruin Doctor Who. Um, yeah. And I'd be like, yeah, cheer. <laughs> Sorry to all the kids in the audience, don't do that. Don't blaspheme or swear or drink until you're 19 in Canada. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Sorry, I'm rambling. Well, I've got Jean with me to your extreme right. Like, right by the stage. Oh, all right. Hi, guys. Yes. Hello. Okay, Jean, go for it. Okay, so, I'm like huge fans, both of you. So, um, my question is, who is your favorite person working with on Doctor Who? Apart from each other. Yeah. Or K face, K Bill. The Gillen. <laughs> she just missed me. The list of a pearl in my desk. Edit. Yeah. Edit. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. No, so weird. Yeah, she can't defend herself. I mean, we were very lucky because there's so many wonderful actors that come to the show. So we had. Tony Coran, who we mentioned, and Michael Gambon and Christmas Carol was brilliant. James Corden was great, it's Craig Owens, he was a good guy. And um, we were just so lucky, but I think ultimately we were sort of spoiled with each other. Yeah. Like Alex as well. Alex Kingston, <laughs> there he is. <laughs> the most sensational flirt on the planet. <laughs> no one. With everyone. With, yeah, even with herself in the mirror. <laughs> It's incredible to witness. <laughs> Question? Yeah. Eddie, if you're not ready, I've got one more right here with Grace. Go for it. Here we go. Um, hi. Uh, my hi. Sorry. <laughs> my question is, if you could live in any fictional world from like a book or a TV show, what world would you live in? Oh, no. I was obsessed with the Land of Ocean and I had a map of Narnia on my wall and used to pray a dream that I was in Narnia. That's, that's a good one. That's a really good one. That's a really good totally one. just wanted to be Mr. Thomas. Yes! I've always been into like the 50s and stuff. I'd, like, I'd sort of like to hang out with Sinatra and Marilyn Monroe and all that. That's not as good as Narnia. That's not a fictional world, is it? Okay, let me think. It kind of is, man. Hollywood is, okay. It's not. I mean, I've always said, can we, can we include sort of like Doctor Who-esque time travel in it? I'd get the TARDIS, I'd pick up Sinatra and Monroe, take them back, check out some dinosaurs, go back to the 50s, watch a bit of jazz with them both, get Sinatra to sing, and then go watching them win the World Cup. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, that is what I'd, I've really thought about it. I'm still in the back here, almost down the middle, basically down the middle, right at the back. This is Renata. Hey, Renata. Hey, guys. Hi. Uh, good to meet you. We miss you on the show. Um, I know, Matt, you have fish fingers and custard. I don't know if it's actually good. And Arthur, have you tried it, and would you agree? Yeah. Fish fingers and custard. I haven't tried it. Really? 
can't know that. It's lovely. Do you know, I, I met a family today who eat it every time Doctor Who's on. <laughs> I was like, yes, I know. It's, yeah, it's fine, it's good. If it was here now, I'd have a fish finger and some custard. <laughs> Quite happily. Yeah, have you tried it? Um, guilty, I haven't. Well, I next will. weekend, when Doctor Who's on, <laughs> eat fish custard. Hey. 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 I'm just testing you. Yeah. <laughs> Paying attention. What's the episode called this week? Again, good. <laughs> so you are definitely fans. And we've got a fan right here. I didn't move too far from where I was. We got Georgia with me. Uh, Hi. Um. So we've had historical figures like Winston Churchill and Vincent Van Gogh on the show. Who else would you have liked to have seen as like historical figure on the show? Well, I'm like Rasputin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Henry VIII. Henry VIII would be quite fun, wouldn't yeah. it? And all these mad wives, and you're just like, maybe they could be aliens or something, and that's why he's chopping their heads off. <laughs> because he's the only one that understands that all women are aliens. <laughs> At least to me, I mean. Um, that's amazing, that's a good answer. Yeah, well, uh, thanks. Cheers. It's, uh, that's, that's, that's what I'm here. Yeah, I'm over here on the left, on your left side, fellas. Yes. And I'm on the left side. Let's get some love. Geronimo. Hi, guys. I'm Maggie. So, my question is, what are your current phone ringtones? <laughs> my phone's off. My phone's off. You absolute lunatic. I know there's someone in the audience. I had to, I used all right. my latest battery on taking pictures of Hulk Hogan. Yeah. <laughs> I think mine's just really boring. Mine's just this ring, ring. Ring me. Has anyone in the audience got my phone number? <laughs> Someone has. Someone has. Oh, seven. <laughs> it's not ringing. No, it's not ringing. It's not ringing. Still don't think it's ringing. I think there's some serious roaming charges. Yeah. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Oh, no, it's just vibrating. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, that. with me right here. I just move back a little ways. Hi, um, my question is, do you have a favorite villain or is there a villain from a different era you would have liked to interact with? Yes and yes. Favorite what? <laughs> favorite villain is there a villain from a different era you'd like to interact with? I know the answer to that. Go. Okay. Well, okay. Go. The silence. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. also. It's just really like them. Yeah. I like the way they move. Like the like Marlix. Marlix is great. Marlix is amazing. Marlix is the guy who played the big silent. Yeah, and he was Dutch, you know, so he should not grow up. And just the silence. And, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> brilliant. He was really, he was a cool guy. Mine is uh, The Weeping Angels, my favourite. <laughs> I sort of wish I'd got a bit of time with the master. <laughs> Well, I've got a theory that actually I'm going to come back as the master. It was all a hoax the whole time. <laughs> Have you signed the contract for that? No. <laughs> I'm pitching it to Stephen. We're going to see what he thinks. <laughs> right here. Thanks, Dad. Come on. Bit of man time, you see. That's what I mean. Hello. Are you with someone? Yeah, I'm over on your left again, fellas. And I've got, uh, I've got Caleb, who is nine, and who is dressed as Keeping Angel. Oh, wow. Where are you, Caleb? I'm oh, hi, buddy. How are you? Um, how hard is it to remember all your lines? <laughs> well, how hard is it to remember all the lines? Yeah. Well, for me, it wasn't too bad. For Matt, I honestly have no idea how he learned it. <laughs> Seriously. I, and I know you're here, so I'm not just sucking up to you, but I was every day just overwhelmingly impressed by oh, how brilliant, but not only because you don't just have to know the lines, you have to be, you have to know them well enough to be quite free with them. And 
to be able to play with it. And you had like seven pages to learn it in. And that was, you know, it was intense. Actually, um, I, yeah, I just, there's no like, there's no way around it. It's like homework. It's like every night you go home, you've got to do your homework. And I just get a sheet of paper and go, do it all, do it all. And just do it and it take ages and you sort of, yeah, it's like we sold the screens. It is a little bit. Yeah, but then you, but then you remember like you're like going and you're facing like the dark and stuff. So it's fine. But but um, yeah, it's it's like this job is a lot of work. It really, it's all encompassing. I know Peter feels it now. It's like whoa, it's just huge. And talking to David and just other doctors about it, they'll go, that was the great challenge. Is is the uh, is the line there? Not easy lines. As well. No, yeah, it's like, a lot of them. You go, no, I don't. Yeah. It's like, it's like, quantum star and there's a perception filter coming around and you know it's like all this mad stuff and um but you know what right what i would do is i'd go so let's say for instance you've got there's a perception filter and there's a pink elephant in a walking room and if we don't get the pink elephant out then the perception filter's going to dissipate and time is going to collapse so then i would go right i'm going to walk down the shops i'm going to buy myself a banana i'm going to put my banana in my cereal i'm going to sit down and i'm going to have a rest and so you would so you would apply the logic of the second part to the mad science part and hopefully it would appear to make sense. Um, yeah. Good question. Alright, we got Jeff with me way at the back here. Hey Jeff. I just wanted to know you guys do cons all the time. What's the best question you've ever gotten? What's the worst? That was the best one. Yeah. Next question. So, we are that brutal, seriously, next question. <laughs> Thanks, you ready, yeah, this is uh, Marissa here, she's wearing a really cool fez. Nice fez. Where are we? Where are we? I was just wondering if you think your personalities are at all like your characters? Um, are our personalities like our characters? No, the doctor's way cooler than me, and the more he's <laughs> way cooler than Arthur. <laughs> I find that not very cool, but um, he's oh, wrong. He's cool, actually. He is uh, he's cool. But who is cool enough? Well, he's cool. In his gilet. Oh, you guys don't know what he's doing. It's his little coating things that he used to wear. Um, I think you always have to put something of your, you know. I've always got my face. Um, but you always have to put something of yourself. Yeah. You know, especially putting in a character for such a long time. Yeah. Uh, I quite, yeah. It's quite a challenge playing something quite close to yourself. I, I always feel there's always, always, always a temptation to yeah. take it in I think, yeah, I think there are elements of the Doctor in me and me and the Doctor, but ultimately he's a way cooler person than I am. So it's all him, really. I always find quite a pressure with, because because Rory was ostensibly just the nicest person, yeah, and you know waited two thousand years for his love. People always look at me with that, like, oh, so nice. <laughs> yeah, and actually, I'm horrible. Yeah, it's a bit of that. it is. This is all an act. We hate each other. <laughs> Alright, we got Emily with me right now. Hi, Emily. <laughs> um, this is really cool. Right, cool. Um, I was, I actually recently just got out of a job that I really hated, so I was wondering what is the worst job that you've been stuck with? Oh, good, good question. On my first day working as a glass collector in a pub called the Rattan Um, uh, I knew that I'd get laugh from you. Um, and um, someone was sick, like, you know in pubs when you walk in and they've got like the carpet before the carpet? So it's the carpet that you wipe your shoes on. So it's like uber carpet. <laughs> someone was sick on the uber carpet. I had to clean it up with a dustpan and brush. That was a low point. That's bad. And I was really keen to sort of make a good impression on the first day. When you were a glass player, it's not a sick player. I mean, exactly. And now I think back, I should have gone, you know what? That is not my job. Yeah. <laughs> I once, now this is, I have a similar story, but I, it didn't happen to me. It did happen to me, it happened when I was working. But I used to work in a skateboard shop in Birmingham, where I'm from. And 
and he came in one day and saw the poo on the side of the shop. <laughs> and, wow. We, and there was a little McDonald's napkin. Just, <laughs> and I won't be too graphic with it, but it was... It went very well. To me, Rick, and Afro Dave had to <laughs> pull straws as to who was going to clean up after Afro Dave had to clean up. Because he didn't even clean, that's not a bad thing. You saw some poo. <laughs> yeah. No one likes that kind of yeah. I trained all the McDonald's, this wasn't necessarily a bad job. I trained all the McDonald's, we were working at McDonald's to do birthday parties. That was quite fun, though. Yeah. I think you'd be quite good at that. Yeah. Ronald McDonald! Yeah. You can teach them balloon modelling and face them to them. And not to the children. So I'm over on your left again, fellas, with, uh, with Harry. Over Hi. on your left. Yeah. Hi, Harry. Hello, Hi. this is Harry. Um, I've heard from the 11th Doctor. Who is your favourite Doctor? And uh, why? I change this answer every time I give it. Go on. I'm intrigued to know who your favourite doctor is. <laughs> Apart from you. Yeah, thanks, Dave. <laughs> um, so yesterday I said Tom Baker, but I don't think, I think I... John, John Perry, but just because he, he's a grown. Yeah, well, I think he's great. Yeah. But yeah. Is, yeah. everyone brings their own... What was that? <laughs> <laughs> it's an owl having a heart attack. Funny enough, it might be a taxidermy author. Oh! Uh, but I remember watching Worlds of Gummage. Oh, well. Worlds of Gummage! He's great. Do you know what though? It's brilliant. That's brilliant physical comedy. Yeah. In that he, yeah. he was a great actor though. Yeah. But everyone brought, everyone brought their own labour for me. Mine's Trouser. Um, yeah, because of, yeah, I love his sort of mad doctor face and I just think he's a wonderful actor, a wonderful doctor. And um, to the side of it is, is my favourite doctor episode. So. Yeah. Alright, right now in front, uh, right here with Joanna. Hi, Hi Joanna. Hi, my question's for Arthur. I was just wondering who's better kiss or Matt McCann. <laughs> Oh yeah, you never tell. <laughs> um, I don't know, Matt. Straight up, Matt. These bad boys. <laughs> no. <laughs> How many times did we kiss? We kissed in dollars. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, A few times. How was always kissing Rory? Always kissing Rory. <laughs> this. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do something funny, just kiss. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Take away from the... Yeah, no, 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 so I went for a drink with a director uh, who I wanted to work with at some point. It was kind of a you know, it was, a, it was a guy who, you know, I went for a drink with and I just met him the first time. It was a group of people. And my best mate turned up, and Keelan, and went, I just read the stuff on the internet. I just read it out <laughs> in, front of, in front of everyone. And then thinking everyone would laugh, but just didn't, didn't really. No one found it funny. It was just a bit inappropriate. Yeah. And then I made us leave. Because I was embarrassed. <laughs> well, I've never worked for that director. <laughs> no blame Keen. What's that going to do with kissing? And fan, <laughs> fan fiction. Have you like, not read any of this? Oh, what when they hug it all? It's well, all like, yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, yeah, I was once bought uh, for a Christmas present, no, and, and there's children in the audience, so I, I won't go into too much detail, but. Let's just say there is an intergalactic series for 
people who like to call naked doctors and companions. I've never watched it. I couldn't bring myself to. <laughs> Doctor Screw. <laughs> deeply, deeply disturbing. <laughs> we should move on before we go ahead and ask about it. Start it down. Way over on your left, fellas. Way over on the left side. Hello. We've got Hi. Hannah here. She's very nice. So she gets a two part. Hi there. Um, the first one is for Arthur. You have very, oh, sorry, very before Matt got his hair shaved. So I was wondering, did you just steal the hair and make a wig out of it? I have no idea what you said. Sorry. Did you steal Matt's hair when he shaved it all off? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I've been anchoring after that hair for a long time. I pulled it off the uh, off the cutting room floor. <laughs> uh, no, I haven't stolen that hair. No. Uh, the next one is for Matt. When you appeared in Deep Breath, I was just wondering, did you get invited right back to the set to film that, or was it filmed during the Christmas special? Oh, that's a cunning question. <laughs> Should I say it? I don't know. <laughs> Okay, well, you guys think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, yeah, we filmed that during the Christmas episode. We knew all along. We filmed it the day I filmed Mary Generation. Just before, yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We wearing a wig. Yeah. It looks really good, doesn't it, a wig? Um, yeah, I was wearing a wig. Stephen Hayden needs to shave my head. I had to. Because Ryan Gosling asked me to, so I was like, yeah. <laughs> what was that? You said, Oh, I know, yeah, hey, maybe there's a thing. You just never know. Uh, I'm with Victoria, right? You're in something. Hi, Victoria. Hello, Beth. Um, I just want to know if there was a moment behind the scenes when you were filming the show that like really stood out to you. That's for both of you. Yeah, was it standing in a box in the dark? <laughs> just groove it, really, just singing to each other. That's what we used to do just before. Just in this little box and just be like, da, 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 da. and then going, <laughs> There were several times when I would turn around and just go, this is our job. <laughs> I love it. And then the screening in New York. Was oh, amazing. that was, yeah. That was one of the crowning moments of our time in Doctor Who. We had this amazing screening in New York. We didn't know that America was into Doctor Who, North America, or Canada. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, and that was a really special time. Yeah. Yeah. They come as well, fine. You got one, Teddy? Yeah, we're over here. What's your name, brother? Taylor. Taylor, stand up. We're over here, all the way on the left. Hello. Hi. Uh, because you both are experienced in musical theater, do you guys ever wish there was a Doctor Who musical episode? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, so, uh, there was a plan that we were going to uh, uh, do. Do you want to do a question? Well, we were going to write one. We were, we were going to do one for, for the DJ yeah, yeah. shows, and Arthur was going to write it. He's a really wonderful musician. He was going to write it, but it never. Never it's bigger on the inside. <laughs> 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 and what was the Dalek song? There was a really oh, kind of Dalek. What was it? It was just like stompy and dark. Yeah. Anyway, I couldn't fit it into a story. <laughs> and then, oh, then it all just got lame. Yeah, yeah, maybe we'll just make it for the internet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, it's kind of hard. Uh, I watched the Buffy musical episode the other day. Yeah, and they've done it so well that no, I really, when I was thinking about it, I really had it in my mind. But it can't be. I think Doctor Who lends itself to a musical, yeah, really, because it's, because it's um, the, you know, the form of it. I think you get away with it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, why didn't you do it? You yeah. Do it. Make it, make it, make it. You can take my song and do it. And I'm with you, Sif, right here towards the middle. I actually changed sides to your left. Oh, there we go. Here's Yusuf. 
Hey guys, uh, I think I'm just speaking for everyone when I say that we don't just love you as actors on Doctor Who, you guys are brilliant actors in your own right. Uh, How difficult did you find it breaking away from your Doctor Who characters not always being typecasted as characters similar to the Doctor or similar to Rory? And do you have any advice for actors who are dealing with typecasting? I don't, it hasn't been an issue, which is, which is great. I think it's only an issue if you make it change. You see actors who get stuck in their own, but we're both curious people and, and thrive on variety and thrive on on trying to tell the story in the right way, and you just have to, I don't know, uh, you know, you get lucky with the parts you get offered to an extent, but you also create your own luck with it, and I think it hasn't been a problem, you just have to stay true to what you do. Yeah, and take risks, and, you know, that's why I do a musical, I can't always sing, go and do a musical. So, and I think if you can find that diversity and your, your brain, your creators with your decisions, then hopefully you won't be tight past. But also, this is a job where you're always, I don't know, I'm finding out that anyway. And the doctors that I talked to, the previous doctors are like, and also, like, when I see David Taylor, I'm like, oh my god, it's Doctor Who. <laughs> so I think there's a sort of, the history of the legacy of this show is always, it's quite a nice thing to hold on to. Yeah. All the way on your left again here, fellas. Hello. Hey, this is Molly, she's 12, she's got an awesome artist. Cool. Hi. Hi. Uh, first of all, I love you both. <laughs> love you both. <laughs> um, what was the hardest episode to film? One Christmas, it was really snowing in Wales. And we were filming over the Christmas period and in a castle. Oh, which is like a snow snow. fridge. And it was a double episode, and it was it was great. It was just hard. The gangers episode. The gangers. Oh, that was cold, man. That was, that was cold. cold. We were we cold. We had to abandon filming one day because we wouldn't have been able to get out of the location because of the snow. But everyone else stopped filming like a week before, like all yeah. the BBC dramas, and we just kept on. And there was one scene where. We were in a room in this castle, the time was to fall through the ceiling and we got in to do the rehearsal and because it had been so cold and the lights that we put in there had warmed the room up, the ceiling started falling in and we had to just abandon the film because the sound was going to fall in our head. And also in season 5, episode 7, The Dream Lord, um, oh, that's, um, that's a good game, game by the way, it's a weird game, but um, um, that was freezing in that village, you know, that was when you had the pillage out and then like, the camera was tracking around as it was, um, I had a pony tail the first problem. Head one? Yeah. Yeah, it's one of the episodes. Thank you. Thank you. Three more was the one of the No one else was paying attention, no. you see. Well done, my lady on my left, for passing the exam. Um, yeah, that was, it was just cold. During the weather. Yeah, the weather was a bit the space. Space. It, was it didn't matter because it stopped too. So. All right, you never guess what I found. Someone named Melody dressed as River Song. Whoa. 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 Um, okay, I've been in this question for months, literally. Um, a Doctor Who's a show that brings so much excitement to all its fans. So, what scene or sequence were you most like looking forward to and excited to film? In the in the in the scripts. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, I think it's hard, isn't it? Because there's so many. Sometimes you open the script and go, oh wow, that's amazing. Yeah, and sometimes the things that look really good on screen are not always the most fun to film because they take longer. And you know, when you're filming and when you're shooting something, you've got to shoot it from this way and this way, and then you've got to get the camera here, and they can be slightly more laborious sometimes. The whale's mouth in the beast below was amazing because they built a huge slide. We just me and Karen got to like slide down it into this goo, which was, you know, work. <laughs> so, what's the rips? You got it on the rip. Oh, oh, what was that game with the guy with the long hair? Fun house. Sorry, this is like an English with Sandy and Martina. Oh, that was so good. Yeah. The cars at the end. It's irrelevant to everyone in Canada. <laughs> 
but check out Fun House online. Pasha! Pasha! Oh, classic. <laughs> classic. Classic. I met Melanie and Martina. Did you? Yes, yeah. Cool. Were they old? They were older. Yeah. <laughs> AJ for the three, I'm with her on the left here guys at the front, on the very left at the very front, and this is Matea, the young lady who passed the episode exam, so you can question. Hi. Hi guys, um, I'm originally from the UK and um, I've been in Canada for eight years, but watching Doctor Who has helped me feel more connected to my British heritage, so thank you so much for making an amazing it's show. Nice. Um, so my question is one for Arthur, one for uh, Max. I was wondering, Arthur, what it was like working with David Tennant on Broadchurch? And uh, Matt, I wanted to ask you what it was like working with Ian Decay, second who plays Leo Fitz on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, in the Ryan Gosling movie. Wow, oh, it's a really well thought through. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well asked. Um, working with David, sorry, I, I, I don't know. I have to do that much with him, but the stuff I have got to do with him has been really good. And it's very different to working on Doctor Who, working on Broadchurch, because it's so very, very serious. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's great, it's hard. But I love Chris's writing. Chris Chibnall's an amazing yeah, writer. And he's the main reason why I wanted to, to do that job, because we, we all accepted it without seeing scripts, which is a bit mad. Um, but really paid off. So yeah, it was it was difficult in the best possible way. But David was was really really great to work with. Okay. Now um, I can second that about David as well. And great, he's, he's he's a cool cat. Um, uh, Ian was amazing. He's a he's a he's a good friend now actually. And um, we had a wonderful time on that job. It was a really interesting process. And, uh, you know, it's it's in Ryan. You guys have really got someone to be proud of. He's a he's a he's a real dude. So. Yeah, uh, yeah he's cool, brave, uh, takes risks. He's a he's a pop rapper. Yeah. Alright, we got Corgan with me on this side. Here we go. Um, in outside of science fiction, what would your favorite superhero or supervillain be? Batman. Hundred percent, and the Joker. There is right there. Hi. Hey. Cool dress. Um. Oh, no, go for it, buddy. I don't either. I was going through the crowd, but there's someone right here. Spontaneous. Go for it. Hi, I'm Katie. Hi. Um, my right up front. Hi. Hi. Uh, my question is, both of you have a lot of scenes with the character Amy. What's your favorite scene with your character and Amy together? Mine's really odd. Okay, I like the scene where we woke up on the tessellator and we were being chased by jellyfish. It just it was a really funny scene. Just uh, for the two of us, a really that was a good funny scene. scene. You had a lot of amazing stuff that you encountered. That and that that relationship became so good. Yeah, I mean all the stuff all the big girls waiting. Yeah, the, the girl who waited was just amazing. I thought Karen was amazing as well. Yeah, thank God. I mean she's Karen's, you know, from another planet in so many ways that she's brilliant. But the three of us, God, do you know what was actually a cool scene looking back? Was that stuff in the park in the eleventh hour when yeah. we meet and there's a three shot of us going, well, What are you gonna do this? We're gonna do this and we're just yeah. but, but we ran out of time and so we shot it just as a like a it was rainy. Rainy. Yeah, and that was really cool. Um, I'm down on the left here, just in the under the bar. Can you see me? Hello, hello. Uh, hello. Hi, hi. Do you want to stand up? This is this is Dahlia. She's dressed as Amelia Pond, and she really? looks a lot like Amelia Pond. We met her too. Yeah, it's yeah. a good Amelia Pond. Right now. And this is her 11th birthday. It's her big uh, 11th birthday trip, and she has a question. Is it your birthday today? I was wondering if you could sing me Happy Birthday. Dahlia, Dahlia, a one, two, three. Oh. Happy birthday to
Uh, it is, honestly, 12 is when the world explodes. <laughs> Oh yeah, gangster doctor. Oh yeah. All right. Number one, thanks a lot for making me miss into the dialogue and <laughs> how did you feel to put on old makeup in the last episode of Time of the Doctor? Good question, my man. <coughs> um, it's, it, you know, it felt cool. It looked really cool. It takes like five hours, so I have to wake up at like half three. And then you're in the chair at like half four, and then you do makeup till like eight, and then you chew all day, so it's really tiring. Um, but they, they grew it, to, it takes a long time. You've had it. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Something about looking in the mirror and seeing. Oh, I'm not going to try and chase the chair, I'm like this. <laughs> Yeah, it was cool though, man. It was, um, it's good fun. I love all that makeup stuff. Yeah. It is just odd looking in the mirror and even seeing someone else's face. Oh, okay. um, God. <laughs> I've got Eric with me. He's got a great question. Hi, Eric. Hi, um, so uh, my group, and I'm sure the whole rest of the con here is wondering, um, what's your favorite dance move? And no, the giraffe that you do does not count. <laughs> Me and Arthur Conchation caught some classic lunging. We were going to stage of Arthur Fire last night, and you know, we put some serious moves into yeah. it. Arthur, show them the lunge. Arthur's got the most amazing lunge. Mine isn't as good. On three. A one, a two, a three. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. 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 I have developed the spaghetti arms recently. Spaghetti arms? Yeah! <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just think the only way to dance is like an idiot. Yeah. That's the only way that you actually get away with being a good dancer. Unless you're actually a good dancer, which I'm not. No, so, no, no. I just dance like a moron. Oh yeah. Ah, oh, you don't have that, you know? You've got some moves. It's cool. Yeah. I'm on the left here with, with Courtney. Hey, Courtney. Hi, Courtney. Hello. Um, yep. Hi, I love you. Okay. <laughs> uh, if you got control to pen an episode without Amy, what kind of adventure would Rory and the Doctor run off and take care of? Mm. Question. Question. Pen it out. Okay. Doctor wakes up, picks up Roy Pot, says, Roy, we've got a problem. Amy's trapped. She's lost all her hair. We've got to find her. We've got to find her. It turns out her hair has run away in this episode of Underground Hair Syndicate. <laughs> yeah. And all of this spawning ginger hair on heads around the world. Yeah, and all across Britain, the hair salons are opening of their own accord. And everything's made of this ginger possessed hair, so the dog has to go. He has to find a huge pair of scissors, and he has to do that in a different planet called Planet of the Obtuse Lights. <laughs> At which point, Rory finds... Don't know, so don't really well this one. At which point, Rory finds a man named Clive, who has a huge pair of scissors, and uh, it's got a scissors from for a mouth, and he eats... Uh, <laughs> and Clive has to come and eat all the hair in all of the shops around the country, and Clive and then, ends up full and sad because he, he, he eats too much hair. Yeah, and then he turns into a cat <laughs> who coughs up all the hairballs, and then actually... He the cat to find Amy. She's yeah. got her hair back. And then the Doctor and Rory sit down, they drink tea, they eat cake, they stroke the cat, and then they realise that the cat has all along been Amy Pond. <laughs> and they find Harry Potter and get him to turn it back into a person. Six times, he strangled by the hair. hair. He's fixated by the hair. He eats the hair and it explodes on the inside. All the time, the doctor's like, "Oh yeah, see you in a few hours." Um, yeah, you've got to have Roy dying. Good point. It's not an episode of Doctor Who without Roy dying. Is it? 
Uh, we got Reagan with me. Reagan, right? All the way here on the right side. The first four. Oh, bye. Bye. Um, bye. Okay. Um, so uh, my question for Matt is, um, if you had another catchphrase, what would it be? And my question for Arthur is, if you were the doctor, how would you play him? My catchphrase would be, uh, one back so groovy. <laughs> As for you, <laughs> I would not want to play the doctor because I think it's already been done how I want to see it. We're left at the very, and this is if any. Hey. Uh, hey, the uh, question comes from that is wearing uh, similar boots, or maybe even the same boots he wore as the doctor. So I was wondering, uh, did you guys take any of the clothes you wore on set? Did you guys wore some amazing outfits. Yeah, yeah, I've got every costume and pretty much every pair of boots. These aren't actually there, but um, they're the nice boots. Yeah, these are cool boots. But, but these were actually bought by the costume designer Howard as the doctor when I got the purple outfit and got these new boots and was like, do I want to I was like, no, I want to keep my old boots because they're more agile and these are a bit clumpy. So I just started wearing these in my life. But I got the costumes and the jackets and they're really cool. You realise I'm never going to be able to wear them. What are they going to do? Wear them at a party? Hi, I've come to the 11th doctor. Uh, I only know she's at home. Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't take any of the costumes. Not a checkered shirt. Not a checkered shirt in sight. Uh, or no. a pair of shorts. <laughs> no. No, I had a little Roman outfit. And we did steal things at the end. I've got bits of the set. Bits of Tardis. Yeah. Uh, we've got time for just one more question from the crowd, then we're going to go back up on stage. So here's Felicia with me, right oh, yeah. here on the right. Favorite Rory memory, and for Arthur, what's your favorite doctor memory? The character or the, the actor? Oh, the character or the actor? Uh, your favorite character moment. Okay, because I think we've got it together. Go on. <coughs> I just liked it when you poked me. Yes. When I came back in, yeah. And it was like in the. That was in. What was it? In the Pedro Gropings. And yeah, and I kept the kid in the. And we walk out, and, and then it comes back in, and I'm like. And you're like, no. Hello. Yeah. And I was always poking you or hitting you in the face. That's my favourite thing with us. Like, we'd like do a scene, then I'd go, oh, I'm running out of acting, I'd do it. Smack! <laughs> you just have to, you just have to pretend it doesn't happen. You loved it, remember? You loved it, don't know how it went. Uh, yeah, I like the, that's, that's one I just really enjoyed it. That, I, I share the same one, actually. That was cool. Other than that, it would be 11th hour when I poked you in the head. Yeah, that's good. All right, we, uh, we do have the wrap, but we know that there's something special that you wanted to oh, give yeah. away, so how do you handle that? I don't know. Um, who, let's do, where is it? It's, right there. It, it's, it's not that special. Why don't we go, let's answer a question. Okay, what is the capital of Sweden? Say so much to you and ask you so much. What do you like to say to your fans? 
Oh, well, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, this is always really humbling and, and it never... Was that a dog? <laughs> Someone's uh, consuming a small animal. <laughs> wow. um, it's always really nice to, it's always a surprise how much you guys care. And, uh, yeah, and I, cause I'm not on Twitter and stuff. So for those of you that are on Twitter, and for anyone that's been to other conventions, I just want to say, because if I was on Twitter, I, I always think I'd say, thanks for like, queuing up for so long and paying. I mean, it's a lot of money to come to these things, and you pay a lot of money, and um, it's, you know, thanks for, for that, really, because it takes, yeah, you travel a lot of money and pay a lot, and these things are cool, so that's what I want to say. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>